Hello, I68 youth. I'm so excited to be able to welcome you guys today. Uh, it's kind of sad that we're still separated, but we know that we are united in one spirit in Christ. And I just wanted to um, start us in worship today, reading Psalm 100. It says, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. I love this psalm and how it's just calling us to sing out, to make noise, to lift up our God. You know that we were created for worship. We were created to adore him. That is the entire essence of our being. Why we were put on this earth, it's just to walk in fellowship with God, to adore him, to lift him up, to worship him. So I invite you to get up on your feet today as we're gonna be singing, as we're gonna be maybe loud. You can be loud in your house. You don't have to be silent. You can, you can yell, you can shout, you can sing, jump, dance, everything just to show God how much you love him, that you are worshiping him with everything that you have. Right now, let's, let's pray and start worshiping him. Holy Father, we thank you that, that you are so good. We thank you for your steadfast love, for your mercy, for your goodness, for your grace. We love you and we love worshiping you. We know that you have created us to adore you and our hearts just cry out to you, God. Help us, Lord, if we are not longing and yearning to be with you, then change us, stir us up, stir it up in our hearts that we would long to fulfill that purpose that you have placed us in this earth for God, to worship and adore your name, God, to lift you up. We praise you, God, and we, we hope that you enjoy this offering of worship and praise that we give to you tonight. Amen. Father of mercy, King of all kings, even in darkness I will sing, I will sing. Cause I've been set free, running out of the grave. Set free, all my sin washed away. Set free, breaking out of the chains. And I'm alive. Oh my soul, lift up the name of the one who saved. He reigns forever. Oh my soul, lift up your praise. I will rise and bless the Lord. Oh my soul. High as the heaven, deep as the sea How great your love that rescued me, rescued me Now I've been set free, running out of the grave Set free, all my sins washed away Set free, breaking out of the chains And I'm alive, oh my soul Lift up the name of the one who saved He reigns forever Oh my soul, lift up your praise I will rise and bless the Lord Oh my soul, oh my soul Oh my soul, oh my soul And I will sing your goodness and I will sing your praise And I will love you all my days, all my days I will sing your goodness And I will sing your praise And I will love you all my days, all my days And I will sing your goodness And I will sing your Sing your goodness, and I will sing your name. 
worship you, Lord. Oh, we praise you, Lord. You are worthy, God. And we command our souls today, God, to, to praise you, God. We command our souls to worship you today, Lord. We lift you up, God with all that we are with all that we have in us God we praise you God we worship you God we bless your name God we lift you up above every other name God and Lord we pray that you would be praised God that you would be worshiped that you would be glorified in this place today God in every one of our households God in our hearts Lord in our lives God be magnified God be glorified Jesus be lifted up God be lifted up God Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you, our Lord. Oh, we worship you, God. We've seen what you can do, oh God of wonders. Your power has no end. The things you've done before, in greater measure you will do again cause there's no prison wall you can't break through no mountains you can't move all things are possible and there's no broken body you can't raise no soul that you can't save all things are possible the darkest night you can light it up and you can light it up oh god of revival and let hope arise death is overcome and you've already won in victory and now you're seated forever on your throne so why should my heart fear what you defeated I will trust in you alone cause there's no prison wall you can't break through no Mountains you can't move All things are possible And there's no broken body You can't raise No soul that you can't save All things are possible The darkest night You can light it up And you can light it up Oh God of revival, let hope arise, death is overcome, and you've already won. Oh God of revival, God of revival, oh we worship you, oh we believe that you will move, that you will breathe your life, oh. Awaken your people, come awaken your city. Oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Every stronghold will crumble, and I hear the chains hit the ground. Oh God of revival, pour it out.
awaken your people Come awaken your city Oh God of revival Pour it out, pour it out Every stronghold will crumble And I hear the chains hit the ground Oh God of revival Pour it out
You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heaven as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. Let's right now give him our hearts. Let's give him our lives. Let's, let's give to him us. The only, the best thing that we can give him, the best, the best thing that we can offer to him is not, it's not money, it's not, it's not anything, it's not, it's not anything that we can physically give. It's our hearts, it's our lives, it's our, it's us. Jesus, we give to you right now. The thing that matters most is us, Lord. For we give to you ourselves. We give to you our heart. Because in your word, it said, you said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength. That is what you are looking for. That is what you want. You want us. You want, you want our will, our desire. Jesus, we give to you our will and our desire. We give to you. Lord, every part of us, everything in us, Lord, we give it to you, Jesus. Oh God, let your will be done. Lord, let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. Jesus, you deserve our praise. You deserve this worship, not just with our lips, but in your word it says that you are looking for us to to offer up our bodies as a living sacrifice. That is a reasonable worship. Jesus, we worship you. We worship you. Come on at home, just worship Jesus right now. Out of your heart, let, it, let worship just come up. Just a simple worship. Just a simple worship in your own words. Jesus. Jesus, there's nobody like you, Jesus. Oh God, you are awesome. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, you're not looking for some kind of a sacrifice. You're looking for me. You want me. You want all of me. Jesus. 
receive my heart. Lord, here is my heart. Here is my mind. Here are my, here's my soul. Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. Jesus, I worship you. Jesus is so good. You know, the Bible says that we have this hope as an anchor for our souls. And this hope, it says it's 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 this anchor that's been that that, that is behind the veil. It is it's it's in it's already in heaven, and we have this hope. But Jesus is our hope. He is our hope. He is our hope in this time that we live. He is the hope that we trust in, that we can rely upon it's this anchor that will never fail us and during this time more than ever right now we need to we need to learn how to just how to just hope in Jesus how to place our hope in him how to rest in him and know that we are safe with Jesus so amen amen we we uh we're so thankful that you could join us tonight and I hope that the presence of God is with you uh, at home as it is over here so we bless you in the name of the Lord uh, so we we uh, we thank you for joining us it's uh, awesome to have you on this wonderful Friday uh, Friday evening so thank you worship team uh, you know I would just want to ask if uh, if somebody's uh, if you are if you are joining us tonight uh, why, why don't you go ahead and say on the live chat uh, let us know who's on there let us know who's watching so we can uh, so we can see so we can kind of be you know so we could be together uh, so I just want to say a couple announcements uh, we are not gonna have our our um, we're not gonna have our our uh, apologetic session tonight we we started a series we started uh, uh, a series of that we were going to continue in a couple weeks. So uh, tonight we're just going to have uh, a good old-fashioned uh, sermon, and and uh, that's what we need. Amen. So uh, yeah, so our apologetic series is going to continue in a couple weeks. So uh, that's going to be that's going to happen later. And right now, I want to uh, actually before we play a video, I just want to make uh, just the announcement. Today we got news. Uh, from Governor Inslee, that unfortunately this thing is going to continue. So we have to we have to keep we have to keep going. Um, let's see who we got. Sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop here for a second. Uh, we got we got Arnieta is with us. Veronica is with us. Cristina. We got some girls over here. We got come on anybody else? Come on, you guys. Don't uh, we want we want to hear everybody. We want to see who's who's joining us. My family is there too, Kononovs, amen. <laughs> uh, uh, we're going to have uh, this, this, uh, this whole online service. I don't know how long it's going to keep going. Uh, they say that uh, May 31st is, the, is kind of the, the cutoff uh, when, when we're going to start going back to normal. Right now we're in phase one. Uh, we are going to be open. Our youth is going to be open in phase three. So when is that going to happen? We don't know. Hopefully, hopefully in, in somewhere around maybe late May, maybe early June. We don't know. Uh, the sooner the better. Uh, but we're going to have this for a couple more weeks. So, uh, yeah, this is, that's just what we have. So we're going to have a couple announcements. If we could play the video right now. Uh, we're going to have a couple announcements regarding next week and uh, just some things that we have going on, all right? So stay tuned right now for the video. Good evening, I68 Youth. Thank you for once again joining us on this lovely Friday. Now, before I begin or we begin, I actually want to challenge all of you. 
If you haven't already, I am asking that you comment down below whether you are watching. Feel free to send each other hellos, to send each other a virtual hug or a virtual handshake. I know that's kind of sad, but we have to work with what we got and it would be awesome to have a little bit of communication down there. So feel free to use this time right now to talk to each other a little bit, see how we all are doing. Number one, in case you haven't heard yet, we have been having daily devotional videos. Now these all can be found on our YouTube page. It is called i 6 Youth. They are also found on the Instagram page, also called i 6 Youth. So make sure you follow, you subscribe, so that you don't miss any future content. Secondly, I would like to clear some things up about the G4T conference because some of us are asking, is it still happening? Or what is going on with it? Well, the leadership there have decided to continue on with the conference. It will still be happening May 7th to May 9th. However, it will be happening online. They are still going to have the same schedule, but instead we'll be watching from our homes. Because of that, we will not be having our youth service live streamed next Friday. Next Friday, May 8th. So instead, I want to encourage all of you, especially if you have the time, to watch all of the services that will be going on on the Generation for Truth YouTube page. The services will be happening Thursday, Friday, and Saturday evening, as well as Friday and Saturday morning. So again, I just encourage you all to tune in because I do believe that God will do something special even if we aren't physically there in the sanctuary. So if you have any questions, any concerns, a need for prayer, just let anyone in the leadership know and we will be gladly there for you. Thank you guys for watching and enjoy your evenings. Good evening. Thank you, Angelica. I, uh, I have to say I have been watching all the devotionals and... Uh, uh, when uh, we got a request to make them, I was slow to to get on board, but then I made one and I watched it uh, when it when it aired, and I was like, "Wow, that actually helped me uh, help me to 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 pull myself together." And uh, I want to say I really enjoy uh, getting the fragments and pieces of the body of Christ just sharing their heart, just sharing. What's, what they're thinking, what they're dwelling on, what they're experiencing at home during this whole thing. And it's awesome because every single person that is, is participating has something to say that just brings life and gives you that, that insight of, uh, of, of God's heart. Uh, and it's, it's powerful. It's really awesome. So uh, if you miss some, go through them, watch them, uh, like them, you know, recommend them, send them to people that you think need them. Um, and uh, you'd be uh, preaching the gospel, right? So, uh, and maybe you want to make a devotional video, right? uh, you know, uh, something God is doing uh, miraculously in your life or something that really touched you, you know, like you should send it to Dennis and be like, Dennis, I made this video or, you know, no, I made this video. Maybe, maybe it'll, you know, make the cut. So uh, I'm not saying you're going to get on there. I'm just saying, hey, make the video, send it to Dennis and Noah. Uh, and if it's, you know, inspired by God and people need it, uh, it'll get get through. Um, I want to say this. Uh, I uh, titled my uh, message for today. I'm just going to be sharing um, thoughts and hearts, kind of like a devotional. But uh, I don't know if it's going to be a real teaching sermon, but, but I hope it empowers and encourages you. And I titled it as... What next? You know, today we we're all waiting for our governor to give us a good, you know, announcement that, hey, this thing's over. Everything's going to go back to normal. And, you know, it isn't. Uh, it's going to continue. And a lot of us are scratching our heads and going, what next? What, how do we anticipate the next move, the next curve? What's going to happen? People are asking, hey, you know, what do I do with my life now? What do I do with my plans, my dreams, my hopes, my, my you know, I had everything figured out and now I'm lost. And I want to say that it's a good time. It's a good time to rebuild. 
it's a good time to to sit and think and 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 draw on God. It's a good time to to have that question in your mind. What's next? What's next? Um, and I want to tell you that I don't have an answer for you. I don't know what's next in your life. I don't know what you're to do next. I don't know what, uh, you know, where, which stock do I invest into? I don't know. You know, which school do I go to? I don't know. Am I, am I supposed to get married or cancel? I don't know. I personally don't know what your next move is. And I just want to state that from the from the beginning, because, you know, many times we, you know, we watch services and we watch, you know, preachers and we, we want to hear them tell us exactly what to do so that we can, you know, give us the, the three steps to success, you know, give, you know, where to, where to put my money and where to put my, you know, how to build my, uh, how to build my prayer life correctly so I get exactly what I want from God. And, and that's not what, what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is, Yes, we're going to talk about uh, our relationship with God. Yes, we're going to talk about our next move, but I don't have the answer. I, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what God wants you to do. Only God can speak that in your life. But tonight we're going to pray for that. We're going to pray that God would pour out His Spirit. God would speak to you, and God would give you that that the by His Spirit. God would give you that unction and that clarity and that power to, to move and operate in, in this time, in this historical moment. I want to talk about Psalms today. Uh, Dennis uh, said in the last, uh, last apologetics uh, panel, he, he answered a question right off the bat. And he said, hey, uh, it's all about why is the book written and uh, who is it written to? And, and taking the time to look at the evidence and look at, you know, historically, who is this addressed to and why was this written? What's the purpose of this book? And Psalms is a very interesting book. Um, I always tell my, my uh, group my, uh, that, hey, if you, if you really want to dig deep, hit the little compass in your Bible app. You know, the little uh, Bible story uh, uh, info. Or, uh, uh, and I actually hit the compass today. And I watched this awesome video. Um, it's uh, put together by this website called Spoken Gospel. And they had one on Psalms. I don't know if anybody watched it, but I recommend you watch it. It's about 11, 12 minutes. And it talks about why Psalms is written. And it talks about the narrative and, and the, 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 you know, this is uh, actually Psalms is put together while Israel was in exile in Babylon and and they were putting it together and they're structuring it in a way to bring hope back to their people, to their nation, to the promise that God gave them. And uh, uh, it's, it's quite amazing how this little video just uh, played out. But it's like what I was thinking. Like when I look at my life, that's what, what I keep coming back to. And what, what they're saying is, look, this whole majority of psalms is all about king david and his walk with god and he had a a gift to to play and sing and to be a a worship uh, worshiper of god and he wrote most of these songs uh, or he wrote uh, a lot of these but uh uh it was it was inspirational and it was historical and it was anointed and that's what makes psalms so amazing is it's history and it's the anointing of God on people, on a nation, on a person, on a king. And yet, it, it's raw. It, it shows, you know, King David is the, the king that everybody was waiting for. The, what everybody wanted. They wanted a king to, to, to bring and, and build finally this, this utopia on this Land, you know, we finally, you know, finally got the right president, finally got the right leader, finally, you know, anointed by God, and uh, he fails. He he uh, he's human. He's uh, just like everybody else, and um, you see this picture play out in Psalms, and and you see other people pick up this this idea, and you know, Asaph and and other. Uh, um, Levitical leaders at the time, they all started to, to participate in the book of Psalms towards the end. 
But I actually wanted to look at a psalm that really uh, hit me, and that's actually today. I don't know why I always tend to use the Bible plan scriptures, because maybe they're the most fresh or the most like lively, because I read them in the morning, and you go through the day, and they kind of hit you, and they, they kind of you re-remember them, and you play them out, and you're like, wow, man, that's interesting. I read that today, and how it's playing out in my life, and, and we're going to read it. But um, Psalms 77, and I'm going to start with verse 2 and kind of cruise through 11, taking a couple breaks so you guys can read with me. Psalms 77, uh, 2 through 11. If you're there, say I. And if you're online, don't say anything because I can't see you or know you're even watching. Well, actually, some people I do know because you texted and said you're watching. Like Arnieta in Florida, uh, who is probably up past her bedtime, but thank you for watching. And I know my family's watching and Dennis's family and all those other people that Dennis mentioned. So when you open this up, say amen, and we'll read it together. And I want to say that before you read this, it, it's raw. It's like, it, it's, it's open. It says this. When I was in deep trouble, I searched for the Lord. All night long, I prayed with hands lifted toward heaven. And you, when I read that, I was like, yeah, that's awesome. Like somebody's like zealous. Somebody's hungry for God. They're searching. They're they're like, you know, in trouble. You know, when we're in trouble, we, we find time for prayer. It's like, you know, if somebody gets sick, somebody goes to the hospital, everybody's praying, everybody's praying. You know, somebody gets in a car accident, everybody's praying. You know, something happens uh, in our family, everybody, you know, find time to just pray and pray. And, and here it says this. It says, but my soul was not comforted. I think of God and I moan. Overwhelmed with longing for his help. And when I read that, I was just like, man, that's tough. You know, that's real. That's, you know, when we are going through a test, the teacher is usually quiet. And again and again, Psalms is a book talking about tests. Talking about test after test. Every decision in your life is a test. Small and big is a test. Everything you decide is going to either destroy you or build you up. And it, you, this is testing grounds. Your whole life you'll be tested. You know, King David gets anointed. He's like, yeah, this is awesome. I got supernatural powers to write the, the, the gospels and psalms. And I have this. And all of a sudden he's running for his life for the majority of his youth and in his, you know, <laughs> A long time. He's running from Saul. He's protecting himself. He's he's even going to the enemies and pretending he's friends with them to, to save his life. It's like, man, you know, yay, anointing, yay, this is awesome. But here we have the the rawness of life. It says, You don't let me sleep. I am too distressed even to pray. I think, I, think, I think of the good old days, long since ended, when my nights were filled with joyful songs. I search my soul and ponder the difference now. I compare my life to what I used to remember when I, when I had the joy, when I had the peace, when, I had, when it felt like you were right there, God. You were in every prayer and everything was just peachy. Has the Lord rejected me forever? Will he never again be kind to me? Is his unfailing love gone forever? Has his promises permanently failed? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he slammed the door on his compassion? Those are like some... Deep, deep groanings that Asaph is going through. This is a psalm from Asaph. And he is uh, saying, you know what? I'm a man of faith. I'm leading the church. I'm, I'm a worship leader. I'm, and, and, and 
this is my reality. There's some traumatic thing happening in his life where he's praying all night. He's raising his hands and he's not receiving the comfort that we so want, right? When we come to God, we, we want that instant, you know, conference feeling, pump me up, you know, let's, let's do this. And it's not happening. And he goes into this doubt mode where he's just going, God, are you not compassionate? Did you forget about me? You know, I thought you promised to take care of me. I thought you promised to take care of your prized possession. I thought I, I, thought I was a good guy. Look at me. My life is miserable. I, I feel horrible. Maybe, maybe he just fell face down into sin. Maybe he just failed at, at, uh, at something that, you know, his weakness. Or maybe, he, maybe, maybe something traumatic is happening in his health or, or, or you know, something happened. And he's calling on God, and, and God is silent. And he says this, This is my fate. The Most High has turned his hand against me. And then he stops. And he says, But then I recall all you have done. And see, this is our job. When we're... <laughs> When we're going through the test, we need to remember. We need to remember what God has done in our life. We need to remember what God has fulfilled in our life. Because here he's playing an emotional roller coaster game where he's feeling down. He's feeling like, man, uh, I, I, I'm not in the, I don't feel the anointing. And if I don't feel the anointing, that means I've, I, I, God's not with me. That means that my life is falling apart. That means, you know, um, where's the favor? Where's the, where's, the, where's the power? Where's the victory? Where is it? Where, where, why didn't the quarantine end today? Why can't I just go back to school? Why, can, why can't I just go back to my job? Why can't I just move forward? Why am I going through this sickness? Why am I having these constant troubles in life? And then he remembers. He remembers the faithfulness where God did come and come forth. I'm going to pause. I'm going to read the end of the end of Psalm 77 in a minute. But uh, I wanted to talk about uh, a person that really helped me uh, ins inspire me to 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 really go after God and it was actually in Russian class when I came back to church and I remember Lena was uh, was in there and my niece Marina and it was like uh, the 25 year old dude and I think the the other teenagers like 15 16 at the time the guys all bailed and I'm like in this class trying to learn Russian at 25. And, uh, but uh, I had an awesome teacher, and uh, Lena, thank you for not giving up on me and helping me. And she, she thought, you know, okay, this guy can't spell, this guy can't read very well, but he really wants to learn Russian, and I'm going to give him something that interests him, and that was history. I like history. So she always gave me these historical documents that I had to read, and, and because it was history, it was some, somehow uh, helped me to to get, you know, wrapped into the, the Russian text and the, the letters and stuff. And she uh, actually introduced me to Pascal. And uh, I forgot his uh, uh, first name. Um, but if you type in Pascal in Google, you'll, you'll get an option and you, you can figure it out, okay? Um, but Pascal was a French uh, guy, and he lived a long time ago. And I'm not going to give you all the details on his life, but his life was inspirational because he was a guy like myself who came to faith and then doubted God, ran away from faith until he had a near-death experience, and then he gave up all of his fortune, everything he gained uh, to become basically a monk. And... Uh, he wrote a bunch of apologetic statements to the Catholic Church, to the king of his nation, and to the Pope directly. 
And he basically accused the, the Catholic Church of a lot of flaws and errors and corruption that were happening. And uh, uh, I'm going to give you a quick, I guess, uh, version of the story. Um, he, at 16, he's a genius. Uh, his dad was an accountant for basically the kings of Europe. And he promoted his son into all the best educational processes that you could. At 16, he was inventing uh, things and patenting things. He basically invented stuff like the calculator and uh, vacuum, the principle of vacuum. He's the guy that actually, we all get the quote, you know, our heart has a vacuum-shaped hole that only God can fill. That's actually him. He, 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 he invented the vacuum. He, he quoted that. Um, he also uh, uh, has a bunch of tons of quotes, but he, uh, he first time he has a kind of a, a moment where he repents and turns to God was when his dad falls and breaks his hip. And back in the, I think, 1600s, uh, it was almost impossible to survive that because the medicine was just not the medicine we have today. But his dad was wealthy, and so he hired the best doctors. And the two of the wealthiest or two of the best doctors in, in that moment basically restored his dad, and three months later, he was able to walk. But these two guys were actually hereditary her, her, heretics to the Catholic Church because they were in a underground church that basically was not in tune with what the Catholic corrupt church was doing at the time. And he spent a lot of time with these two doctors, and these two doctors influenced his life. They challenged him with a lot of uh, deep theological questions on truth. And so he actually uh, went with them and sided with them and became their friend and followed uh, the Christian faith for a bit. But then he went into this uh, crazy mode and he started to just kind of denounce God. And maybe, maybe he went through this process where he was like, you know what? I went into Christianity thinking, you know, it's going to give me everything that I don't have. And you know what? It doesn't really help me. It didn't really make all my troubles go away. So, you know, it's not for me. You know, it's... I don't know, God didn't really hear me. God didn't really, you know, I'm not married yet. I don't have my Ferrari. I don't have my house. Maybe it's not, you know, the magical formula of life. So he gave it up. And uh, he uh, later, what happened was his dad passed away. And his sister and him were the two uh, heirs to the riches. And his sister joined the church. And she was faithful. And she said, I want to give everything I have to the church. And he was so mad. He kept pleading with her, like, don't, do, this is a sect. These guys are just want your money. Don't give your money to this underground church. They're just going to, they're just, you know, they're, they're, you, you're, they're brainwashing you. He was, like, so against the church. And then he himself gets in a, I think, a carriage accident and has a near-death experience. And God speaks to him and changes his life. He, uh, at that moment, gives away not only his sister's half, but his half to the church. And from that point on, he starts leading a life that is empowering and, and is anointed by God to, to affect the Europe uh, culture. And to this day, he's, he, he writes these 13 letters. He had more, but they never got uh, finished because he had a lot of health issues his whole life. At you know, 18 years old, he was going through medical processes, and he died at a, a young age. I don't remember uh, how old he was, but I don't think he lived past 50s. Um, and in the end, he, he accomplishes so many things. But here's a couple quotes that he has that really challenged me when I, when I read them. A man's miseries derive from not being able to sit in a quiet room alone. I'm going to read that again. A man's misery is derived from not being able to sit in a quiet room alone. You know, we have all this distraction today, and it really hits us even, even more. Because, you know, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm actually happy quarantine is happening to the whole world. You know, I'm actually happy, kind of, because I, I get a break from... Providing and running and going and 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 I have you know we're in business we have a family business and it's just it takes up so much energy and time and focus and, and ministry and 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 all these different things that you can get so busy with 
right? Family, kids, you know, all these things. And it's hard to just find time to sit quietly without trying to solve issues and problems and, and get distracted and all this. And it just, or just, just to have time to read the, the, the word of God by yourself uh, in, in quiet is like precious, like gold right now in life. And this, this quarantine is really helping me in, 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 this, in this. I'm like, yes, this is, this is, for me, this is like a God moment. Um, but uh, uh, he's basically saying, look, all your problems derive from you being so busy that you can't really solve them because you're not listening and toning, tuning into what God wants. All your problems in life, this is the, you know, the, the, they'll be solved. All your miseries, all your problems, they'll be solved if you can connect to God and know who you are, why you're living, and where you're going. And then he says this, because uh, he, he, remember again, he was fighting the Catholic Church and all the, all the things that are doing. He says, man, never, never do evil so completely and cheerfully as when they do it with religious conviction. You know, we're talk- we uh, didn't touch a lot of all the religions out there, but, but there's religions out there that are so zealous on their conviction to do sin that they're, they're promoting uh, crazy sin when you, when you participate in these religions. Um, but uh, when, when you can justify your sin with a religious text or religious worldview, it gives you more, you know, that's why atheists are so passionate about their faith and so pushing, uh, against pushing the sin out there because they're justified with their worldview. Well, they think they are. Uh, for now, they are, right? Because they're just going, you know what? We like, we like uh, adultery. We like, you know, drinking. We like partying. We like this. The, the, you know, atheism works really well to support my, my lifestyle. That's really what's going on. And he's, he's, he's quoting this in the 1600s, or, or, and he he's, he's, has a lot of very deep quotes that you probably heard, and I'm not going to go through all of them, but just those couple, but you could take some time to just uh, go and read his biography. Go, you know, you have time, so go, go research some amazing people of God, not only just in, the, in God's Word, but all throughout history. There's amazing men and, and women of God who, who did so many things uh, because of this process that we see in Psalms. And this process is God is anointing you, but you're human and you will fail. God is anointing you and God will restore you. God will pick you back up as long as you keep getting back up. God will restore your life. God will restore his purpose and his call in your life if you get back up. And that's what Psalms Literally, it's all about Jesus. It's all about uh, the, the king that will not fail, the faithful king that, that, uh, that will govern justly and righteously, and that's Jesus. That's, w- that's what we long to, to be a part of. That's what we long to have one day is to, to come into the presence of heaven and to, to bow at our, at our maker's feet and to tell him how, how honored and how privileged we are to, 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 to be in his kingdom, to, to, to have our sins washed away for free. That, 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 that moment is, is what we live for. That moment allows us to get through every trial, for, through every failure, through every tough thing that we face. Because we know the truth. We're connected. We, we, we can sense it. Not just logically. Not just with our heart. Not just with our morality. But f- many of you are filled with God's presence and filled with the Holy Spirit physically. There's a lot of things that are telling us of this one moment that we're all longing to be a part of. I'm going to read the last part of uh, Psalms 77, verses 13 and 20. It says, O God, your ways are holy. Is there any God as mighty as you? 
You are the God of great wonders. You demonstrate your awesome power among the nations. By your strong arms, you redeemed your people. The, des- uh, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph, when the Red Sea saw you, O oh God, its waters looked and trembled. The sea quaked at its very depth. The clouds poured down rain. The thunder rumbled in the sky. The arrows of lightning flashed. Your thunder roared from the whirlwinds. The lightning lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your road led through the sea. A pathway through the mighty waters. A pathway no one knew was there. You know, I I never uh, imagined the Red Sea partition like that. I never imagined that the whole world knew something was happening. Kind of just like that moment when Jesus Christ died and everything became dark and the earthquakes and the whole world knew that something historical just happened. Something that divided history just happened. It says that here. It says that this on earth there was the, the, the earth was shaken at this moment. In the scripture, it says you know people knew something was happening because God was moving. And this is talking about how faithful and powerful our God is. After all of that, the night prayer and raised hands and and bitter tears and and, and heartache and and troubles and and panic and all the emotions, all the things that clash and hit your life, all all the failure, all the all the all the times you, you the regret, everything that this life brings. You remember. You remember. You remember who God is. He's faithful. He's amazing. When he, he touches the earth, the earth knows. The weather responds because he's the boss. He's in control. A pathway no one knew was there. You know, all the people that wrote the Bible from beginning to end, all the different authors, all the different periods of history, they knew of a pathway of salvation. The prophets, everybody was talking about the, what they didn't even know, what they didn't comprehend at that moment, at that time. But that pathway happened 2,000 years ago. Jesus Christ came on this earth, died, and rose again. Died on a cross, took our sin, and beat death. To tell us there's a pathway. He just parted. He just parted eternity and made a salvation, a way of salvation for us. And you led your people along that road like a flock of sheep, with Moses and Aaron as their shepherds. God's leading you. Right now, God is leading you. God did not abandon you. God did not forget you. God has anointed you. And God is leading you. God is powerful to move in your life. God is powerful to, to, to manifest in ordinary ways through your life. Into your circumstances. Into your friends, your family. God is powerful to to release that anointing. When you think it's going to show up, when you least expect it, that's when God moves. When you're weak, when you're you're like, God, I, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to preach. I don't know how to answer that question. I don't know how to respond. I don't know. God's saying, don't worry. I will help you. Don't worry. I will back you up. Don't worry. I will give you what you need. Don't worry. You know, all the devotions that we're watching, it's all about have joy, have peace. Don't worry. Trust God. Everything's, you know, and it's not just, hey, positive, good. These are I 6 8 youth members talking about what's happening inside of them in this craziness. And they're saying, you know what? I'm, I'm also excited. I'm also not, I'm also excited to, to be tested yeah it sucks yeah maybe my finances are are going crazy maybe 
I don't know what to do next. I don't, you know, I'm, yes, logically things get really complicated and tough. Yes, we, we still, you know, we're not just floating down a river and we don't care. We have to take care of our lives. We have to take care of our families. But we're not going crazy. We're not dominated by worry. We're not committing suicide. We're not giving up on life because we trust God. Because God is our answer. Because God knows everything. God's in control. God's powerful to move. I want you to, to just close your eyes and let's pray that. Let's, let's pray that over ourselves, over our youth, over our nation, over the world. God, we're, we know you are powerful to move. And in this time, in this moment of, 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 of craziness, God, we are hungry to see you move. We're hungry. God, we're lifting our hands. We are, we are crying out to you. We're calling on your name. We're, we're asking you to help us to sit in silence and, and receive from you. Speak. Speak. Holy Spirit, speak. Speak. Move in us. Help us remember. Help us remember when you saved our life. Help us remember when we heard the gospel for the first time and we caught a glimpse of the hope that you bring, the victory that you bring. Remember that moment when God filled your life and that excitement that it brought, that life that came with it. How powerful that moment was. It's not just emotions. It's not just a cult. It's not just a, a freak show. This is a reality. This is documented, historical, logical, amazing history moment. God, thank you. God, thank you for being faithful. Thank you for being faithful when, when we're not. Thank you, God, for, for, for your grace and your mercy, God, that maybe sometimes it seems like it's not there, but, but it always shows up in the perfect moment. You always pick us up when we're weak. You always pick us up when we're hungry and thirsty. God, you always show up when we call on your name because you are great and powerful. You are omnipresent. You are everywhere at once. You are outside of our cosmos, outside of time itself. God, you are the alpha and the omega. You are the beginning, God, and you hold everything in your hand, and you hold us up in this moment, and we're excited. We're excited that you've given us a commission to not just sit, not just be alone in a room, and that's it. You've given us a commission to hear and to deliver. God, and I ask you to open our ear, open our eyes, open our heart to hear from you. There's so many people that could just be happy to receive a, a hello from us and a caring, hey, how's, how's life? How's it going? Are you okay? God, it's a perfect time for us to, to get up and to activate, to get up and to start moving, to get up and to, to, to look at the harvest fields, to look at the ripeness of humanity, how desperate everybody is right now for you. And we have you, God, we have you, we have you, we have you, we know you. Help us to be bold, help us to to move in mysterious ways. Help us to, to go outside our comfort zones, to, to trust you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just want to say thank you for being with us tonight, everybody who's watching online, and, and I pray that Tomorrow that you wake up excited uh, in the midst of everything. You wake up 
excited to, to worship God. Tomorrow, sun, uh, sorry, Saturday, it's a normal day to have off, but it's probably like every other day now. But uh, be excited to just uh, maybe wake up earlier than normal and and just spend some time with God and just, just ask Him to move in your life. And He will. He will talk to you. Maybe He's talking to you now. He will talk to you. He will show up and He'll tell you exactly what to do. He knows. I don't, but He knows.